Trigonometry, the branch of mathematics that has enabled people to study heavenly bodies and sail the seven seas for centuries. So what exactly is this trigonometry? Well, trigonometry is simply the study of triangles. When we look at triangles, we like to compare the lengths of the sides, and we like to look at the angles. By the way, you see that symbol down there in the angle? That's the Greek letter theta. Theta is simply what we use to denote an angle in trigonometry. So we have these triangles, and we have an angle, and we have all these sides, so what on earth is going on here? Well, let's take a moment and look at a triangle. We want to look at three ratios. The three ratios are called the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. And because mathematicians are lazy, we have abbreviations for them, S-I-N, C-O-S, and T-A-N. Well, that's all great, you say, but what does it mean? It sounds foreign. So, let's take a look at a triangle. Here we have a triangle with lengths 3, 4, and 5 feet. We begin by identifying the different parts of the triangle. This is a right triangle, and the side across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. The side that's across from the angle is called the opposite, and notice it's called the opposite because I had to go through the triangle. It was on the opposite side. The last side is called the adjacent. When we want to calculate certain ratios, all we do is we say the sine of theta. The sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. In this case, the opposite is 4, and the hypotenuse is 5. So the sine of theta is the ratio 4 to 5. The opposite side compared to the hypotenuse. Cosine is simply the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if I want to compare the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, I say I'm finding the cosine of the angle. The cosine of theta is 3 over 5, 3 feet to 5 feet. Finally, the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. We compare those numbers, we have 4 over 3, so we say the tangent of theta is 4 to 3, meaning the opposite side is 4 feet, the adjacent side is 3 feet. So, how on earth can you possibly remember all of this? Well, there is a trick. If we take each one, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, and we look at the letters that they spell, we often can think of SOKATOA. SOKATOA reminds us sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Some people have come up with clever ways to remember this. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away, and that reminds them of the letters. Or some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. No matter how you remember it, you want to remember what these ratios are. Example one in the notes is for us to try together. We begin by looking at the triangle, and we want to label the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. Please pause the video here and label those sides. Let's see what we have. We have the hypotenuse, the side across from the right angle, the opposite, the one across the triangle from theta, and the adjacent, the one that's right next door. Now, let's find sine, cosine, and tangent. Let's find the ratios of these sides using theta as our angle. Please pause the video here and come back when you're finished. The sine of theta is 5 over 13. The opposite is 5. The hypotenuse is 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is 12. The hypotenuse is 13. 12 over 13. Tangent opposite over adjacent, 5 over 12. Example 2 is for you to try. Notice we only have two of the sides, and so we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third. Please pause the video here, find the length of the third side, and then find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle theta. We use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the side is 24. Then, we can use the triangle to find our sine, cosine, and tangent. 
The sine, the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse, is 24 over 25. Cosine, the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, is 7 over 25. Finally, the tangent, the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent, is 24 over 7. Example 3 is a little more exciting because it has some square roots in it. This is the last example for you to try in this lesson. Please begin by finding the length of the missing side and then find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle theta. Please pause the video here. We began by using the Pythagorean theorem. We found that the hypotenuse is the square root of 37. Sine, cosine, and tangent, I have 2 square roots of 3 over the square root of 37, 5 over the square root of 37, and finally 2 square roots of 3 over 5. Uh-oh, we're not quite done though. Remember, we can't leave a square root in the denominator. Tradition doesn't allow us to do that. We have to rationalize the denominator. Please pause the video here to rationalize the denominator. If you don't remember how to rationalize, let's take a look right now. When we rationalize, we look at the square root that's in the bottom. In this case, the square root of 37. We multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 37, and then we end up with a perfect square in the denominator. So we end up with 2 square roots of 111 over 37. Now rationalize the cosine. Here again we multiplied by the square root of 37 over the square root of 37 giving us 5 square roots of 37 over 37. So what do you need to know? Trigonometry is the study of triangles. We have three ratios that we're interested in, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. You can remember sine, cosine, and tangent, and which sides they use, by remembering Soka Toa. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away, or some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. And these are the basics of trigonometry, and this is what you need to know.